can upcast it on level 4, for example. Reaction. One more fireball. And we can cast one more fireball on this dude. And just like that, three fireballs in one turn. Hail and matches adventures. Welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. It's me, the Spot King. And you asked me to make Sorlog build. So I did. Okay, race of choice. Just for stylistic approach, I like half elf. I mean, everyone likes half elves. Why not? Additionally, it gives Fey ancestry, which is like very really nice stuff. You can't be put into the sleep. You got resistance to being charmed and proficiency with light armor and shields. So why not? It's like good race. But uh, my advice: just pick any race you like. For my sub race, I pick draw half elf, as you can see. But let's build our sorlock. So. For our starting class, I'm picking Warlock. And that's because I want to have at least two levels in Warlock as soon as possible. And this build will utilize power of powerful Eldritch Blast Cantrip, which Warlock have, and super powerful Sorcerer Magics. So for our subclass, we're going with the Fiend as always, just to get some temporary hit points. It, it will help us with survival. For our spells, we go with Armor of Agators and Hex. So bread and butter of warlocks. Background, pick whatever you like. I picked Outlander for some athletics and survival checks. And we got pretty balanced ability distribution. So we're gaining 10 into strange, 14 into dexterity. We're having 14 in constitution with plus 2. No intelligence, a little bit wisdom, 10 wisdom exactly. And we got 15 in charisma with plus 1 into it. Just like that we got really balanced ability distribution. Skills pick whatever you like. And let's go and build our Sorlock. So let's level up a little bit. With this build you're going into levels in Warlock only. So second level pick whatever you like more. And we will go with Burning Hands. So on second level we will pick an Hellish Rebuke. It's a reaction that you can use your Warlock spell slot to deal 5 damage to your enemies. And we get an Eldritch Invocations. So, we add in our Charisma Modifier to Eldritch Blast, and we add in Repelling Blast to push enemies away. And just like that, we're going to level 3. So, while level 3 getting you access to level 2 spells, and they have pretty powerful stuff, additionally, you're getting your Pack the Boon. But most of the stuff won't be actually too meaningful for us, and we still can continue playing with level 1 spells. So that's a great point when you can go and switch into Sorcerer. Sorcerer will unlock your more cantrips, and you want some utility stuff and maybe melee cantrips like Shirking Grasp. Most importantly, you want some utility stuff. And we will be focusing on Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer with this build. And what we want to pick? Draconic Ancestry Red or Gold or brass, basically fire damage. They will give you a different spells, but I like to stick with the rate to get these burning hands. And don't forget, we can pick some spells, and night spells to pick at this level will be magic missile to just ignore defense of enemies and 100% hit them. And you can pick some protective controlling stuff like sleep, for example. So, on level 3 you get 4 spell slots already, and these spell slots will be on level 1. You want to start your game with the armor of Agatos, and this will take your Warlock spell slot, and second Warlock spell slot will be used for Hex. While gameplay loop can look something like this, you just use your sleep, it will use Sorcerer spell slot, you just put your enemies into sleep, at this level so you can put one, sometimes two enemies in the sleep, just like that. Then you can apply your Hex as bonus action, to inflict additional damage to this enemy. And while they're sleeping, you can use either your Fire Bolt, your Burning Hands, or your Eldritch Blast. Of course, most of the time you will use your Eldritch Blast just because it's doing a lot more damage. Look at this. So it's doing 1d10 plus your Charisma modifier and additional from Hex. So it's like really nice damage output. And after you did this, you can reapply Hex. Don't forget, you get this reapply Hex action and it won't require you any spell slots. So you just reapply Hex and continue destroying your targets. And you can continue doing with Eldritch Blast. Or you can use Magic Missile. Just like that. And if enemy nearby, you will be threatened. This means you will have disadvantage. And that's why we're getting this Shocking Grasp cantrip. So we can cast it and destroy enemies in melee range. So let's continue our journey. And right now we want to get at least 4 levels in Sorcerer. You can pick nice protective spells like Shield for example. And you get access to meta magic. We will definitely get into Twin Spell and Distant Spell. Then on level 5. 
character and level 3 sorcerer, we get an additional spell slots finally, so we can access to this level 2 spell slots. What we want to have is Misty Step, and we want to change our sleep most of the time, just because it's uh, becoming weaker and weaker when we level up, because enemies get more and more HP. We want to change it, for example, for Hold Person, it's a nice change. And we get additional meta magic, and we want to use Quicken Spell, gain ability to use spells as bonus actions. That's like great ability from Sorcerer. So, on level 6 we get an additional cantrip, and we don't care about these cantrips, because we don't have any fire damage. For our spell we pick in Scorching Ray, because we get fire damage spell right now, and we get feet finally. We are finally getting some feats, and what we want from our feet, we want to increase our charisma modifier to get more damage from our cantrips and charisma spells. Then on level 7 we unlock level 3 spells, and we are of course going for our favorite fire spell, fireball. Then on level 8 we get sorcerer to level 6. And finally we get this subclass future. Elemental Affinity Damage. And this will add our Charisma Modifier to our Fire Damage spells. And that's big. So now we can pick some spells. And again, okay, you want some fire spells. And there's no fire spells. So we're picking Hust. It's like nice pick. And level 9 is a really big break point. So you need to decide, do you want to continue leveling up your Sorcerer? And you can get this Wall of Fire, which will have increased damage from your sorcerer right now or you can go and level your warlock right now so think that you need to decide do you actually want to make this full hybrid with six six of warlock and sorcerer or you want to have advantage of additional feats because if you go six six you will lose your last level feat and actually we don't want to do it so we're getting our level in sorcerer and we're getting this wall of fire and then on level 10, we're getting our Sorcerer to level 8, finally. Level 8 will unlock one more spell slot of level 4. We don't care about it too much, so we can pick whatever you need. Nice spell could be Polymorph to disable your enemies. And most importantly, you get this feat. For our feat, I recommend going for Elemental Adept at level 10 and get Elemental Adept Fire. Right now, you can't roll less than 1 damage. And don't forget, it's not 1 damage, it's 1 damage on 1 dice. So basically, when you pick in any spells, for example Fireball, you're rolling 8 dice of 6. So this means you're getting at least 16 damage with Fireball anyway. And just like that, and just like that, we finished with our Sorcerer. While we can go and get this level 5 spells, we don't need anything from here, because we don't have any fire spells over here. And we're switching to our Sorcerer to finish our journey. So for Sorcerer, pick some utility spells, maybe Darkness can work. And for our Pact, it doesn't matter too much. You won't be able to get this uh, Strong Familiars anyway. You don't need this Pact Weapon anyway. And Cantrips is kinda nice, but you don't care too much. So pick whatever you like. Do you need this Guidance maybe Cantrip? Maybe you like to use Torn Whip sometimes. So Pact of this Chain sounds fun to get this Quasit Familiar, who can scare enemies, for example, and take a hit sometime for you. And then you're finishing our build with Warlock level 4, and this will finish our Sorlock. On level 4 you get additional spells, you can go for some utility again, so maybe Blindness, maybe Invisibility. Lower level spells, but they still works. And you're getting your last feat. For last feat you get an ability improvement and maxing out our Charisma. So, Sorlock in Baldur's Gate 3. It's not working like many players like to play this Sorlock hybrid in D&D. We don't have Coffee Lock here, because Warlock and Sorcerer got different spell slots, so it's not the same spell slots, and as Sorcerer you can create spell slots for Sorcerer, not for Warlock. And when you're using your short rest, you recharge Warlock spell slots, not Sorcerer spell slots. I hope it makes sense, so you understand how it works. And basically how you want to start your day, you want to cast Armor of Agatos on yourself, and you can even upcast it for more powerful spell. But most of the time you will use Warlock spell slots for this stuff, it will be level 2 spells, so 10 HP is not bad, it's like 10% of your HP. Then you want to use your Short Rest when you cast it everything you need, you summon your familiar like Quasit, and Quasit will have this ability to gain invisibility and basically want to be invisible as Quasit all the time, so you just run with him as invisible and scare enemies from time to time. He's just 7 HP guy, but again, if enemy doing like 50 damage in one turn for example, in one attack, then it doesn't matter, does he have like 7 HP or 49, <laughs> he still will die, so it's like don't 
meta anyway. And after short rest, you will regain all your spell slots. And just like that, we go in all Warlock spell slots. We're going into the fight. As sorcerer, you need to decide do you want to use your sorcery points for casting spells or do you need additional spell slots instead? So, for example, you can go and create level 4 spell slots and you'll get 3 spell slots of level 4 with this multi class build. So, with Quasit, you can go and try to scare enemies from invisibility. Maybe it works, maybe it's not. You don't care too much. Or you can do 1d4 plus 3 damage. Not a big deal. But as a Sorlock, you can do a lot. One of nice ways to start your fight is to cast Hust on yourself. It's level 3 spell, so you use spell slot for this, and you gain one additional action anyway. So now just go and inflict some fire damage. And we can go with Scorching Ray, for example, on level 2 spell slot, to fire 3 projectiles on enemies. Just like that. And they can't resist it, because we got this elemental adept. And this we picked just for that. Because when you pick this fire dragon, you can use your sorcery points to ignore this resistance. But we don't need sorcery points for this right now. So we're totally ignoring it anyway. So we can basically cast Hex on our enemy. It still works, don't forget it, adding you bonus damage. But only do it if you're not the one who casting Haste on yourself. So Haste is concentration spell and it will break your concentration. So don't do this mistake. And just like that, you can do this in one turn. Basically you can go and cast Fireball on these guys. You can upcast it on level 4 for example. Just like that. You don't need this reaction so you can basically when you level up to maximum when you get this elemental adept future you can go and turn off this reaction don't forget you can do it then after you cast the fireball you can do and cast one more fireball and if you think it's not enough it's not enough yeah you can go and use meta magic quicken spell to cast any spell as bonus action that's like coolest part so you can go and cast one more fireball on this dude and just like that, three fireballs in one turn as this crazy Sorlock. So yeah, we used a lot of our spell slots, but still we got plenty left. And we can definitely use Misty Step to disengage from enemies, for example. And then continue attacking them with our fireball that ignore resistances, burning hands and other fire spells. And don't forget, you can use Meta Magic Twint spell. While most of your magic is not really good for twin spell, you can use Firebolt and this is just only a cantrip to fire two creatures at the same time. So you can't fire it on one creature two times, you need to pick another target. But if you need two targets that will be around this range to kill them from 3 to 30 damage, you can definitely use this. But most of the time, of course, you will use this quickened spell to cast it as bonus action. And just like that, Eldritch Blast on higher levels, don't forget, it's doing 1d10 damage, but you're firing 3 rays at one time. That's like craziest part here. So you can fire 3 times at him one time, and then you can do it one more time, just like that. And if you need just some little but stable damage that don't have any resistances, don't forget you can use your magic missile to 100% hit your targets. And again, you can use it two times in one turn, just like that. And then can use your quickened spell one more time to use it one more time in one turn. So basically we just hit it 12 magic missiles in one turn just like that very funny very cool and interesting build to play i hope you will enjoy playing it in baldur's gate 3 and will have a lot of fun but make sure to check other multi-class builds on the screen right now they awesome too and can give your party a lot of age in this game see you in the next videos